Hey, what's going on guys? Kalamazi here. This is going to be my quick patch 10.0.7 Affliction Warlock guide slash refresher video. Now, coming out of patch 10.0, there's a decent bit changing with Affliction Warlock. Talent-wise, Clash Tree, Spec Tree, different builds. Rotation's pretty similar, but I want to make a pretty fast refresher guide for those that haven't played AF in a while or looking to maybe uh, look at it again because AF looking pretty spicy in this new patch and even spicier in patch 10.1. Now, this is not going to be as in-depth as the 10.0 guide and not as in-depth as the upcoming 10.1 guide, but talents, rotations, enchants, gems, food, all that kind of stuff, pets will indeed be covered here. So uh, yeah, shameless plugs like always, weak wars, add-ons, profiles, links down below, Twitch and Discord with all for free for you guys. Uh, and as always, I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons. Guys, thank you a million times for all supporting Patreon. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you're looking at supporting, should be a link up here as well as down below in the description. And heads up, once again, the 10.1 Warlock spreadsheet will indeed be going live probably in a week and a half or so, roughly, uh, on Patreon. The tier 3 failure rank or higher does indeed get early access to that. And with that being said, let's just jump right into talent builds. So getting into the Warlock class tree, there's typically a general template you follow for every Warlock class tree build. However, Affliction has a few more nodes of relevance due to talents in the spec tree that you might play, like Inevitable Demise, for example. So general class tree typically goes like one point in Burning Rush, one point in Fell Domination, two points in Demon Skin, two points in Fell Armor for more defensiveness, one point in either Howl of Terror or Mortal Coil. Coil is typically the option in like raiding slash PvE where you want heals and things like that. Howl can be used in plus or PvP if you want, but typically I opt for Coil here. One point in Enfeeblement, right here for more Curses. Uh, I guess Curses of Enfeeblement, whatever you want to call it. Uh, one point in Demonic Embrace for more Stamina. One point in Demonic Inspiration for either a Pet Attack Speed Increase or Grimoire of Sack Damage Increase, depending on what you're playing talent-wise over here. If you're playing Sack, to a similar extent, one point here in Wrathful Minion for a Damage Done Increase to your Pet or more Sack Damage. Then one point here spent in Demonic Fortitude for even more Stamina. And then when it comes to this row, a few options. So... Usually I put a point in Sweet Souls, which unlocks both, you know, this hybrid node here and Dark Pact, and one point in Gateway, which unlocks these nodes here as well. I guess Shadow Fury and this Choice node. Now, there is a few, I guess, like floater points you have, you have left over whenever you fill the tree out with this general template. We'll get to that in a minute, but there are some options in this row being both Nightmare and Horrify and or Accrued Vitality slash Lifeblood if you want, but I'm taking these two, Sweet Souls and Gateway. Putting a point here either in Strength of Will or Dark Accord, uh, depending on whatever setting you're in, it could vary. We'll grab this for now. One point in Dark Pact, one point in Icar sorry, Fre Frequent Donor. This is a shorter cooldown on Dark Pact, uh, which is a bit better than Icar of Devils. One point over here in Shadow Fury. And then typically, these points here are basically always played. And they're worth it for Affliction. You put two points in Sargara Technique, giving you more Shadow Bolt and Drain Soul damage. Two points in Sakrathar's Guile, giving you more Agony damage. And I will say this point in Shadow Fury, you can put here. It's typically applicable in most settings. Mythic Plus, PvP, at times, Raiding. I'll take it out for now, but usually I put it here. We'll come back to it in a minute. The big thing here, 10 points left, and we have this row unlocked. So one point in Soul Link, which is good and worthwhile, also unlocks Soul Conduit, which you put two points in, DPS trait, and two points in Synergy, which is also a DPS trait. And at that point, you have your center node here, which is either Inquisitor's Gaze or Summon Soul Keeper. These both have been buffed in patch 10.0.7. They both do solid damage. For now, I'm going to play Summon Soul Keeper in Mythic Plus in AoE settings so where I can get value. Inquisitor's Gaze is the choice in rating. I might just go towards Inquisitor's Gaze universally at some point. We'll see what happens, but uh, for now, we're going to choose Gaze here. So at this point, you have four points left. Now, you can put these in utility nodes. If, For example, if you want, you know, I guess a bit more accrued vitality healing, which, once again, does gain value if you're playing ID in the spec tree over here. But let's say you want Shadow Fury from Mythic Plus. You can grab that. Let's say you want Soul Burn, which typically I play in most settings. You can grab Soul Burn. Uh, circle value, gateway value, drain life, health, funnel, health stone, all that stuff. Pretty solid ability all around. Then you have two points left here. Now, most players opt to go into being destroyed for the health loss reduction and movement speed increase on Burning Rush. However, there's one important node left here that we haven't taken depending on your build of affliction in the spec tree. And that is Grim Feast. Grim Feast says drain life now channels 30% faster and restores 30% health or restores health 30% faster. Basically, it's faster to cast. <laughs> now, you only take this node if you're playing Inevitable Demise in the spec tree. If you're not playing Inevitable Demise, 
you don't take this node. This does not increase the damage of Drain Life or ID, but it causes the channel faster, essentially allowing you to cast more spells in the same window comparatively to not having this ability, if you follow what I'm saying. If you're not playing ID, you don't play Grim Feast. If you're playing ID, you're going to play Grim Feast. If that's the case, you can pull a point from being destroyed, put it in here. You can pull a point from Soulburn if you want and put it in here. Uh, it's sort of up to you, but you do have those utility traits that can sort of float around three-ish points. You can grab, you know, another point here from being destroyed and put it in Banish if you want, a point in Amplified Curse if you want. You can put it in Dark Fury if you want for a shorter CD on Shadow Fury and increase Radius. Sort of up to you. But the big, big thing to keep in mind here is that whatever you do, uh, those four floater points, if you're playing ID, once again, being inevitable demise, you certainly want to have Grim Feast in the class tree. Shifting gears here and getting into the actual spec tree for Affliction Warlock, there are four different builds here I want to show you guys. This is going to be one of two single target ones. This is what I call, what most are calling, the Malevolent Visionary single target build. And that is due to the talent here being called Malevolent Visionary below your summon Dark Lair. There are a handful of changes hitting the Affliction Warlock spec tree in 10.0.7. So very briefly, I'll recap the general structure of the tree, but uh, the builds vary a bit. And the thing to take home here is that Affliction Warlock spec tree is very customizable and can be like, tailored and tuned to a wide variety of different settings. So off the bat here, one point in Rapture, one point in Unstable Affliction, one point in Wrath and Agony. This is now a one point trait. It used to be here at two points. It's now one. One point in Nightfall, two points in Shadows Embrace, two points in Dark Virtuosity, which is a Shadow Bolt and Drain Soul damage increase. Note, this is being nerfed in patch 10.0.7. The tooltip's not applied yet on PTR, but it is indeed being nerfed to, I believe, 5% and 10%. Still worth it in single target. Two points here in Kindle Malice, giving you a Rapture and Seed damage increase. This is also being nerfed to, I believe, 4% and 8% instead of 8 and 15. Still worth taking. One point here in Drain Soul, one point in Siphon Life. You have the option of Singularity and Vile Taint here. Vile Taint is, for me, still the highest simming out of these two in single target, and certainly better at AoE. One point in Soul Swap, one point in Pandemic Invocation. Now, one point in Sacrifice. Now, people often ask, why aren't you playing ID in single target? And the answer is, ID is just not very good. It's very undertuned damage wise. It takes two talent points. And you also typically want to have around Pandemic Invocation for the Shard, Gen, Claws, and the damage effect, right? So what I found is that having one point in Pandemic Invocation and one point in Soul Swap, allowing you to get to Withering Bolt here, is more damage overall, allowing you to put a point somewhere else, like Sacrifice, instead of wasting two points in ID and then one point in Pandemic Invocation. So that's why you're playing PI and Soul Swap. You probably don't cast Soul Swap in single target, basically at all but it's still there and it's sort of like a filler toll trait you have to pay to get to withering bolt now you have two points of withering bolt two points in focus malignancy one point in creeping death one point in left infliction one point in dread touch dread touch is your bread and butter for affliction single target this is the debuff you want to maintain on your target for basically the entire duration of the fight it's eight seconds requiring you to rapture once every eight seconds to maintain the buff but it's a large increase to all your dots when you can one point in Tormented Crescendo here. This is very, very strong in single target. And free Rapture cast make it easier to maintain Dread Touch for the entire duration of the fight. One point in Haunt. One point in Dark Lair. One point in Soul Rot. And two points in Malevolent Visionary. Now, this is the first of two single target builds. I will say this build sims about 150-ish DPS less than the build I'm going to show you in a minute here, which is called the Haunted Soul build. However, this build is a better option if you're getting power infusion because dark layer is two minutes it has more damage every two minutes in dark layer with visionary comparatively to the next build the next build also is similar all you do is change one two three points and put them in these three points here seize vitality and haunted soul now this build is build number two it sims from what i've seen about 200 ish dps higher than the build playing malevolent visionary and soul rot but the difference is that this build sustains damage over the course of a fight. If you compare a Malevolent Visionary Warlock in single target to a Haunted Soul Warlock in single target, you will not burst to their opener. They're playing Dark Lair with a Malevolent Visionary, giving you a larger damage cooldown every two minutes, a lot more IV damage. It lasts longer, 10 more seconds, and they're playing Soul Rot. Soul Rot's an extra dot, which means more Rapture value, further increase from Kindled Malice, further increase to Dark Lair. They burst a lot harder, which is why PI benefits them more than a Haunted Soul Warlock. However, a Haunted Soul Warlock will sustain a lot more, a decent bit more damage 
consistently over the course of the fight, whether it's, you know, a minute, two minutes, three minutes, you'll ramp damage up, I guess catch up a bit more over the course of the fight. When you're sustaining 85k in single target comparatively to the Malevolent Visionary Lock sustaining 65, 70-ish k, but bursting, you know, 10, 20, 30k higher than you with cooldowns. So sort of your choice. I still prefer Malevolent Visionary. I think it's more exciting having this talent around with Soul Rot, but we'll see where it goes. Both builds are competitive. I'm starting with Visionary on Tuesday with Soul Rot, and we'll see where that goes. The website, the spreadsheet will be updated as well with these builds. If things change, keep that in mind. The third build here I'm going to call the single target AOE raid hybrid build, I suppose. And this build is similar to the previous builds. You still have the same end tier talents here. I will say off the bat, you can indeed play Haunt the Soul if you want. Similar to the last two builds, just take two points out of MV, one point out of Soul Rot, and go one, two, three. So we have that option as well. But the big difference here, you're not playing a point in PI, not playing a point in Soul Swap, not playing two points in Dark Virtuosity. You're playing a point in Seed, a point in So, and two points in Soul Flame. This is a fight, a build I play on a fight like Razagath, where you have a lot of single target elements. You know, Razagath or a Pryo mob, but also add spawning at times. So you want seed value, you want soul value. When they die, you want soul flame value. This is sort of the best of both worlds, a good solid hybrid build, you know, where you have just, I guess, a mix of damage profiles. Razagath also being a great example, once again. A lot of single target boss damage, but at the same time, in the intermissions, you want that strong on-demand seed, so soul flame damage burst profile for the adds, whether it's first intermission or second intermission, right? And once again, if you want to play Haunted Soul, you can just change from Visionary and Soul Rot into Haunted Soul, and you are good to go. You can indeed play Inevitable Demise with this build as well. Just take two points out of Soul Flame, put him in ID on a fight like Primal Council, for example. If you're playing Soul Rot with that as well, you can sort of fork your drain lives that are buffed by ID via Soul Rot. So very flexible build. I'll have links to them down below, obviously. And uh, yeah, this is probably your best, like, just universal hybrid build for most raiding in general right now the final build here is grim reach dark harvest aoe this is where i'm starting on tuesday in mythic plus playing a similar early structure to the previous build seed so soul flame a siphon life vital tank all that but you're playing this final point here below visionary it's called grim reach it causes your dark lair to aoe eye beam on every mob that has dots active on it funneling damage from the main mob you have corruption siphon life and hopefully ua on as well and turning it into more aoe iving damage on all the mobs it's a strong on demand two minute burst cooldown and heavy aoe it's good to have around very strong with power infusion as well and over here we're playing soul rot two points in soul leader's gluttony and one point in dark harvest soul leader's gluttony reduces the cooldown of soul rot whenever ua ticks so basically if you're playing two points in this Soul Rot should roughly sync with Vital Taint up every half minute, give or take a few seconds, right? So every 30 seconds, you have that strong Vital Taint plus Soul Rot profile, which can fuel seed spam. And even having Dark Harvest around gives you more haste and more crit per target hit by Soul Rot. So you can imagine how if you're pulling, you know, four, five, or even six, eight, 10, 12 mob packs, every half a minute, you have this Vital Taint, apply Agony Window, more dot damage, going to soul rot some dot damage but getting this huge dark harvest profile and giving you more haste more crit you spam seed you have grim reach at times with dark lair pair with this too it, it is exceptionally strong and the cool thing about this is you still get haunt you still get creeping death you still have good single target elements in all these abilities soul rot or sorry soul rot siphon life vile taint soul rot malevolent visionary haunt creeping death withering bolt uh, focus malignancy you still have good single target elements but have very strong aoe with Grim Reach and Dark Lair every two minutes and solid AOE every half a minute with Soul Rot, Gluttony, Dark Harvest, and Vile Taint. I will also say you can take two points out of Soul Flame and put them in ID in certain dungeons. For example, Alcatraz Academy, a great Soul Flame dungeon around the tree boss, right? Halls of Valor, not the best Soul Flame dungeon. So I probably play ID over Soul Flame in those. Up to you. Either way, there are options. But uh, yeah, links to all the builds down below. Now, when it comes to Affliction Warlocks, single target opener, and maintenance rotation, it actually really isn't even that complicated. The main thing about it is you want to maintain your dots, maintain haunt to a similar extent, just like dots, stack Malefic Affliction early on in single target, and then maintain the Dread Touch debuff on your target, basically refreshing it once every eight seconds via casting Malefic Rapture. Now, this is the Malevolent Visionary build, which plays Soul Rot. If you are not playing Soul Rot for whatever reason, you just don't cast Soul Rot, you ignore these rules I'm about to tell you. If you're playing Soul Rot, 
Every Soul Rot will be cast with Vile Taint. Vile Taint's a half a minute cooldown. Soul Rot is a minute. Every other Vile Taint will be cast without Soul Rot. Once again, Vile Taint, half a minute cooldown. Soul Rot, one minute cooldown. Now, if you opt to play the Haunted Soul build like this, you just don't play Soul Rot and you cast Vile Taint on cooldown and that's life. No Soul Rot, no problems, no worries. Good to go. We're going to play Malevolent Visionary here, but once again, both builds basically open the same way, barring one casting Soul Rot and one not. Now, I will say if you want to play Singularity for whatever reason, if you are playing Singularity and Soul Rot, you will hold Singularity for 15 seconds to the minute mark and then cast it with every Soul Rot. If you are not playing uh, Soul Rot, but you are playing Singularity for whatever reason, cast Singularity on cooldown and then pair the fourth one with Dark Lair. Dark Lair we push back to about 225, being a two minute cooldown. Might have been a little confusing there. Rewind it if you need to listen to it again, because there's some rules there. But either way, it's actually very simple once you decide what you're playing. Now, we're playing the Malevolent Visionary Soul Rot build here in single target, like I showed in the talent section a bit ago. The big thing here, you're going to want to precast Haunt into Unstable Affliction before the boss is pulled. Then cast your three dots. You're going to then cast Drain Soul to stack Shadows Embrace to three stacks. Uh, cast Soul Rot, cast Vile Tank, cast Dark Lair, and then Rapture Spam four times for three stacks of Malefic Affliction, and then to trigger Dread Touch. So what that looks like is, say you're pulling the boss here, about two and a half-ish seconds for the boss is pulled, you'll precast Haunt, and to precast Unstable Affliction, boss is pulled now, Agony, Corruption, Siphon Life, drain the three stacks here, one, two, three, Vile Tank, Soul Rot, Trinkets, Potions, whatever, Dark Lair, and then Rapture. One Rapture, one stack, two stack of MA, three stack MA, and there's Dread Touch right there. Refresh your Haunt. And the big thing here, I have Soul Rot and Vile Tank active for five-ish more seconds here. So the more dots you have active at once, the more Rapture, Malefic Rapture does more damage based on the number of dots you have active on the target whenever you Rapture. So essentially you want to try and Rapture as much as possible while you have Vile Taint and, and or Soul Rot active on the target. But you also want to save shards so that you can maintain Dread Touch for basically the duration of the fight. So I just Vile Tainted here again. So once again, I'll Rapture a few times. Rapture, Rapture, Rapture. Still saving a shard-ish to refresh Dread Touch when need be. Refresh Haunt here, refresh Siphon Life, Drain Soul a little bit, Rapture for Dread Touch here. Now I know in about 10 seconds roughly, I have both Vile Taint and Soul Rot coming up. So I'm going to Rapture for Dread Touch here. These are crescendo procs right here too. These are instant cast rapture. So I know that I have one queued up to once again, refresh dread touch there. Refresh UA, refresh haunt, dump this before it falls. Drain a little bit here. So I have vile taint here. I have soul rot here. We're gonna pop both those. We'll rapture once, rapture twice. I'm gonna drain a little bit here, try and fish for a proc, got a proc. So we'll rapture again, fresh siphon life. And we could have spent one more shard there under the rapture, but it's fine. It's pretty close to them falling. And once again, just maintaining. Refreshing haunt, refreshing unstable affliction. Rapturing here for Dread Touch, Corruption, Agony, Drain a little bit here, no reason to not, Rapture for Dread Touch, Fresh Siphon Life, Drain a little bit, Rapture again, we're getting a lot of procs here too, and this is the RNG of Affliction, at times you get a lot of procs, at times you don't get much at all from Crescendo, if you get a lot, you have a lot of shards, if you don't, it's sort of Feast or Famine, so we Vile Tainted there, a few Raptures, Fresh UA, Fresh Siphon Life, we're getting a lot of procs here, we'll cast Corruption, Rapture again to Refresh Dread Touch, Fresh Haunt. Now I know I have Dark Lair in about seven seconds here. I have about 15-ish until Soul Rot and Vile Tank are back up. So I'm gonna refresh Dots here. Wait on Dark Lair for a little bit. Refresh UA, Rapture again, cast Corruption. I am just swimming in procs here. We'll drain a little bit. Refresh Haunt, Refresh Siphon Life. Then go Vile Taint, Soul Rot, Dark Lair, and once again, Rapture. Rapture, Rapture. Rapture, a Rapture again, because why not? We have both Vile Taint and Soul Rot up and Dark Lair doing more damage. And we have six-ish seconds remaining on both, so I'll Rapture again. One more for the road here, why not? Corruption. And that's basically the gist of it. You want to maintain Dread Touch, trying to get value out of Crescendo procs here, once again being uh, this, the Instant Cast procs, to leverage Dread Touch uptime while saving shards. Don't overcap on shards, obviously. Maintain dots, rapture more during Vile Taint or Vile Taint Soul Rot windows to get more value out of that stuff. And that's pretty much the gist of AF. Maintaining Dread Touch is the biggest thing. The more, the higher act, the higher uptime on Dread Touch, the more your dots do. And with it being an eight second buff in patch 10.0.7 up from six seconds, you have a lot more leeway with shards than you had in 10.0. So AF feels much smoother in single target. I wouldn't mind it being 10 seconds, but at the same time, that's a little excessive, I think. It's more than fine at eight. AF feels pretty smooth in single target. The damage is competitive, but honestly, 
it might seem like it's complicated, but realistically, it really isn't once you get the hang of it and put in a little bit of time. Now, when it comes to Affliction in AoE applying the Dark Harvest Grim Reach build that I talked about earlier in the talent section, things are similar to what they used to be, but also a bit different. And a lot of that stems from the way Dark Lair is now. So they've changed Dark Lair in 10.0.7 to now say you get more damage passively per dot that you have active on your target, but it's increased by X percent for every damage over time effect you have active on their current target, their target being Dark Lair. It used to say all targets. So in 10.0, if you had 10 targets all with Agony on them, Dark Lair would get a certain buff uh, times 10 for every Agony on each target into I-Beam. But in 10.0.7, it only gets buffs from the target that it is hitting. And that will be extrapolated out into Grim Reach when it AoEs into everything, right? So you want to pop Dark Lair on your target that you also put Siphon Life and Unstable Affliction on in AoE. So the opener looks similar. It's still a little different, uh, but not too bad. It just takes some getting used to, right? So you're still playing Haunt. You're playing Soul Rot. You're playing Soldier's Gluttony. You're playing Dark Harvest. And this is what the opener should look like. Now, let's say we're heading into a poll here. We have full CDs and we're ready to go and all that. The one thing to remember is that, once again, with Soul Eater's Gluttony, unless you're really desynced for whatever reason, every Vital Taint should pair with every Soul Rot pretty nicely. You'll probably hold your Vital Taint for three to four-ish seconds, but watch the cooldown here on these two at the same time when I'm casting. So, we're going to open up. Thanks for pulling the pack. We're going to pre-cast Seed or Cast Seed. Go into Vital Taint. This is my, my main target here. Cast Haunt, Unstable Affliction, Siphon Life, then Soul Rot, Trinkets, Potions, Dark Lair, and Spam Seed. Watch my damage climb here. Once again, Dark Lair is hitting that main target, extrapolating all that damage out onto other, other targets by a Grim Reach, getting the full amp from Siphon Life and just UA on his target and everything. We're going to refresh Agonies before they fall here, all the mobs. Catch all these. Catch this. Catch this. Catch UA again here. Catch Siphon Life. Now, theoretically, I do have Vile Tank in about now, but look at my Soul Rot. It's about 12 seconds off. So we're waiting a little bit on this, but not too long. It's basically up right about now. So we're going to end up casting this Siphon Life here, use Vile Tank to reapply everything, go Soul Rot again, and depending on the number of shards you have, just start spamming Seed again. Seed, Seed, look at the Seed, the Shard Gen here, Seed, Seed, and this is basically the cycle of Affliction in AoE. Now, Pax might, Pax might not live this long, but either way, Dark Lair does a good bit of damage. Look at Grim Reach doing 10-11% of your damage, plus I-Beam being here at 3.5, Seed doing a lot, and once again, the Vile Tank Soul Rot sinking, at times, it can get a bit desync depending on when packs die and things like that. But for the most part, you typically should have Vile Tank and Soul Rot at the start of every pack. And if it lives long enough, they should resync at least once over the course of the fight. Ath can pump out a lot of damage. In Grim Reach, it's no joke. So when it comes to item enhancements, gems, enchants, food, consumables, embellishments, stat priorities, stat prio, haste, then mastery, then crit, then verse. You'll in the end want to run your own sims on raidboss.com, running a top gear sim with different gems and enchants taken into account to get the highest overall for your character, because your character's gear will indeed differ from my character's gear. If you don't want to do that, you can follow, follow once again, haste, mastery, crit, then verse, but you might be leaving some DPS on the table by not running sims. Now, as far as gems are concerned, most Aflocks end up running Keenest Emeralds, which are major haste, minor mastery. I have seen some Sims and some locks playing Keen Neltherites, which are major uh, mastery and minor haste. Up to you. Once again, most play from what I've seen this gem. I do. I would run this as well, but I run your own Sims. You will, however, guaranteed want one fierce illimited diamond. A illimited diamond in general, I guess. They are BOP. It is 75 main stat and 66 haste. Typically, sometimes I've seen mastery ones, but usually it's haste. And the rest will be the lesser non-BOP gems, typically at rank 3. As far as enchants are concerned, I have Graceful Avoidance on my Cloak at rank 3. Waking Stats on my Chest at rank 3. I have 200 Avoidance on Bracers at rank 3. My weapon is Sophic Devotion 3, which can be a bit pricey. If it's a bit pricey and it's not a great weapon, you can buy 2 or 1, but 3 is indeed worth it as far as, you know, longevity is concerned. Outside of that, we do indeed have Spell Thread. The, I think it's Frozen Spell Thread. I'm not sure exactly if it's wrong. I'll put a tooltip on the screen here somewhere. It's the gold one, 177 int and 105 stamina. And as far as rings are concerned, I have pure haste enchants. There are only pure enchants. I have haste. You can go with mastery once again. It'll really be a sim thing. So I've seen haste and I've seen mastery being better for locks at times if you're affliction. Destro and Demo typically does haste, but affliction does vary a bit between haste and well, mastery. 
Now, as far as embellishments are concerned, Lariat is universally just the best one pretty much everybody from what I understand. We want to make Lariat. And the second option here is Amos of the Blue that I have made. Now, Affliction has Haunt and it has Shadows Embrace, which both increase damage dealt to your target. Damage dealt is every source of damage. So Amos of the Blue has a bit of extra added value for Affliction. The other option realistically is the Potion Embellishment, which is, you know, I guess a bit more applicable in like sustained two, three AOE base cleave settings and that. But Amos the Blue, your option rating, and realistically, most play at Mythic Plus as well. And as far as everything else is concerned, you have Howling Runes here, basically weapon oils for Dragonflight. You have Faded Fortune Cookies, which are a baseline, just hour-long intellect buff. I will say it's very good to invest into one of these flavor packets, which is not really an embellishment, but it sort of looks like one. It gives you a 100% basic increase, the duration for the, of the food you eat, and it now persists through death, which is great with these. I bought a stack of 100, I think, day one of the expansion launch and haven't gone through them since. Great embellishment to have. Embellishment. It doesn't count as one, but I would certainly buy one and put it on a crafted item. Outside of that, I have seen both Elemental Chaos and Versatility being played. Now, I will say, Elemental Chaos does seem a little higher for me. I think 200-ish DPS, but Tepid Versatility has the added benefit of being a defensive base file too. Damage increase and like damage done increase and damage taken reduction. So, if I was on a fight like Mythic Razageth, I'd probably play Tepid Versatility. Up to you. And so, thanks for watching, guys. That should just about wrap it up. Hopefully, the video answered any questions you might have had about Affliction Warlock, Rotations, Talents, all that stuff heading into patch 10.0.7. Now, once again, any talent builds I've talked about in this video, I'll have links to that down below in the video description. And down there as well are links to my Twitch and Discord, where all my weekwares, add-ons, and profiles are free for you guys if you'd like to you know, acquire those. Before we end the video, I also want to give one final shout out to my patrons for uh, thank you guys a million times for all supporting Patreon. Really appreciate it. If you're looking at supporting on Patreon, should be a link up here as well as down below. And I want to mention one more time that the 10.1 PTR Warlock spreadsheet will indeed be live in probably about a week and a half to two weeks on patreon uh for the tier three fellow guard ranker higher does indeed get really access to that if you're interested so warlock more specifically affliction is looking to be pretty good in patch 10.0.7 it's probably out of all three specs the one that's getting the biggest changes slash damage increases we'll see where it goes tuning wise and all that and like i said if builds do change or there are buffs or nerfs i'll update the website the spreadsheet and obviously you guys here on youtube so uh yeah but fingers crossed for no big nerfs or anything like that and we'll uh see where it goes so with that being said thanks for watching guys and i'll catch you all again soon on stream peace